Hi, this is Ron with Envision Cat. This tip is going to look at GeoPack quarter modeling with templates and uh, roadway designer as it came from inroads. And what we're going to look at is creating cross sections and labeling cross sections to wind up with something similar to this. Um, so let's get started. First of all, I am going to remove everything I have on the screen here and take you from the um, step one to create them. So I'm going to open up quarter modeling dialog box here in GeoPack. And I've already created my design surfaces, so I'm just going to slide this out of the way. I don't really need to um, step through the whole quarter development, but I do have a preliminary design that I would like to display in a cross-section format and annotate. So I'm going to come right to the create cross-section or draw cross-section command. And I've already set this up as far as uh, I'm going to constrain the station limits, intervals, scale, all of that. I've also defined which surfaces I want defined. Now the surface has been defined as a DTM, and you'll see how that comes into play with my preliminary design. If I have a template, let me show you the template quick here, that has uh, some components in, these closed shapes representing um, aggregate, asphalt, or sub-base, sidewalk, whatever it happens to be. If I want those to show up in my GeoPack cross-sections, I want to create my cross-section using a DTM. Now when you create a final surface or a surface using Roadway Designer, it will create either a TIN or a DTM. Um, if I chose TIN in here, I would get the surface line, but I won't get those closed shapes. You can see why we have type um, DTM up here then. Okay, so I'm set to go. I just want to create these cross sections. Um, and the creation of the cross section and the annotation is, is tied together. So let's just see what it looks like here. And I've got data point orange on for, for drawing. And also if I decide to regenerate these, my update option is set to delete existing um, cross sections and redraw. So I'm going to data point to uh, create these cross sections and we're going to zoom in and you can see it uh, by default here it looks pretty dang ugly and all this uh, dark text that we're seeing here those are names that represent the vertices in my um, template you know so these are the, the uh, break lines or the edge of lanes the component um, not component names but um, feature lines that are created so we need those feature lines to define our annotation. So let's look a little bit um, at, at what was uh, created here. And this labeling comes on by default and it uses your active um, text attributes. So if I go to my text attributes and I want to change this and I determine that point 0.1 seems to work pretty well for me, I would like that labeling to be at a 45 degree angle. I can change that. And I also want to change the justification of this text. And I'm going to switch from uh, center center to uh, left bottom here. And I want it to be angled at a 45 degree angle. And you'll see what happens here when I regenerate these cross sections. The other thing that comes into play, it uses your active attributes. So I'm going to come up here and change level as well. I have a level called a no plot, which I would like to use. Um, and that's just a level I define in my level manager as not plotting and it's a light color. So uh, let's go ahead and regenerate those cross sections. Now when I regenerate those, it will relabel them, but unfortunately this update option, it does delete existing elements and redraw, but it doesn't eliminate the uh, um, labeling that goes on there. So let's just go ahead and see what we can do here. So I'm just going to draw. It'll regenerate those cross sections for me. And let's go find them again. There we go. We zoom in. I can see the, the uh, old text here and the new text. So the moral of the story is you just have to delete that original annotation, which comes in as a microstation graphic group. So now it's much easier for me to read the names of the vertices that are um, uh, um, generated from my uh, template when I ran and created this finished model. Now what I would like to do is I want to label these cross sections. I'd like to get cross slope and I'd like to get some station offset information as well. That brings us up to the next icon here, cross section labeling. And once again I've already set this up, uh, but this dialog box, you know, it's a little bit I don't know, cumbersome to work with. If I want to slope la label, I have to walk through it and define in between which named points I want to slope label. Now I've already done this, so let me just go ahead and open 
um, a file that I've already saved that has that those settings in. Let's just get this out of the way. So I can define that in between the named points, for instance, center line and lane one right, I want it to be labeled. So you can pick it with the ID on the screen, um, and you can define the symbology by double clicking down here and setting up the symbology you want to use. And that's true whether it's um, elevation and offset station label or maybe just a text label that you want to um, put on the drawing. So let's just take a look at this and I'll select draw labels. And you can see the text that pops up on the screen. So I've done uh, some some work on the right side here. I haven't completed it um, over on the left side. And uh, let's uh, look at how you can modify this. Now I can see that on this particular location at lane one right, I've got four decimal places in my elevation offset. I only have two in my um, lane two right is what that's called. So I want to make some changes here. So I'm going to take this uh, lane one right, double click on symbology here. And what I have to do then is say, well, I really only want two decimal places. Now I have to OK, but the other thing I have to do that's critical is I have to update this preference. So I'm going to pick on this button to modify or update it. I can also save that back out to this XLP file. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. We'll just overwrite the one I have on my hard drive. And go ahead and relabel. To relabel, I have to go back to General and select Draw Labels. Didn't really see much happen there, but once again, it doesn't um, delete the previous one and regenerate the new one. It writes right on top of it. So let me just go ahead and delete this previous set. In fact, I'll just get all of them. Hit draw labels so you can tell I'm not using any smoke and mirrors here. Now that's kind of tedious. If we have a lot of offset um, elevation offset labels that we want, we have to do it, you know, set up the symbology for each one of these. Fortunately, there's a little bit of a trick you can use here. Now let's assume I want those same labels. I've gone through the work of getting the, the text and the offset and the delimiter exactly how I want it. I don't want to have to go through and, you know, pick sets here. I could just ID, pick the next point that I want to label, and then go through and, and modify the symbology to be the way I want it to be. But it's already been set up some of the, for some of these other ones, so let me show you a little bit of a shortcut. Now when we save this file, it saved it out into this XLP file. And I'm just going to select Save As so I can get to my directory here. But if I take that particular file and open it with Notepad, that's all it really is. It's a text file. So I'm going to go ahead and open it with Notepad. And you can see what's stored in here. It's showing me the names. This is for that slope labels that are shown. But here's elevation offset labels. Now instead of having to go through all of this again, if I want lane 2 left versus right, I can simply come in here. Well, let's get lane 1 as well. I'm going to grab this. I'm just simply going to copy it. Move down to the bottom of the list here. And control V to paste it back in. Let me make sure I know where I'm at. So there's lane 1 right, lane 2 right. And I actually want this on the other side of the road, so I'm just going to change that to lane 2 left. Oops, and uh, let's just put a space in here, make it a little bit easier. And lane two, or lane one left here as well. So I should have mirrored it now with lane one and lane two both left and right. Simply going to save that file. And I'm going to uh, cancel out of here. And what I'm going to do is go back to load it or open it so it gets reread from my hard drive. So now when I go back to um, labeling here, Again, let's remove what's there so we can see what we're getting. Go back to General, select Draw Labels. Now I've got it replicated on the left side from what I did on the right side. I can do the same with the slope labels. But at least that way I don't have to go and define them each individually as far as that symbology. So that's it for this tip. Thank you for watching.